If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel in another cutting tutorial. Now this spell that we are doing today, I already have a tutorial on, but I figured, hey, I have to make one anyways. I am making this one for our July 2023 class, so I may as well make a cutting video for it as well. So today I'll be cutting out with you the Tumbleweed Toiletries Tote by Blue Calla. This is the one I made for myself over a year ago. Um, when I made the tutorial, so make sure I'll try to remember at the end in the cards to put where the tutorial is, as well as down in the description if you need that. So yeah, this is going to be a really fast cutout, which is great. Um, it's a really fun sew. I know when I made it, I learned a lot of new things. What's amazing about this is with the train case, you would automatically think that there was going to be a bound edge and there's not. So that's a new technique in itself. We're gonna learn how to do a train case without the binding. You'll see in the pattern it calls for binding or bias tape, but that isn't for the, uh, for closing it up. Now I know I got stuff in here, so I apologize for that. But the binding is for right along the zipper there in the mesh pocket. So don't be scared of binding because there's none in it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I also want to remind everybody, as I do at every video, I am recording this live. It is not voiceover. I am in my basement studio of my house. My house is not soundproof by any means, so you will hear background noise, such as my animals, my kids. I live on a busy street. You'll hear cars. I'm right beside the airport, so you will hear airplanes. So please do be kind in your comments. I can't control my atmosphere around me and I do not have a soundproof room so there will be those um those noises in the background and I apologize for that but really there is nothing I can do about that so hopefully it doesn't bother you too much I know most of you it doesn't bother at all but I have had a few hurtful comments telling me that I'm not very professional due to the background sound so I have a little bit more control over the background sounds when I am doing voiceover because I can do it in the nighttime when it is quiet, but when I'm doing live, I can't, and cutting videos are always best done live without the voiceover. So this is how we are going to do this. Um, anyways, I'm gonna get all of my materials together and then we will get to cutting out this amazing toiletries tote. All right, so what we are gonna be making this toiletries tote out of is again this is a client order for me so my client wants this made out of we ordered this from spoon flower and i don't know what it's called but there if you wanted to order the same thing can you guys see that that is what that is um, i had it uh printed onto petal signature cotton um it's designed by designs custom printed and it doesn't really it says Design number 8457174.jp. So it doesn't really have a name on it. DP, sorry. So this is going to be our main. So that is going to be kind of where I had the uh, swirly stuff here. Now, this one is cotton. This one was vinyl. Um, so cotton pieces, you want to make sure that you are going to interface them with a woven interfacing, like an SF-101 or an EB Fuse Light. I actually want to give my cotton a little bit more of a canvas feel, so I am going to use EB Fuse Medium, which is an Emmeline Bags product. It's similar to 809 in how it feels after, but it's woven, so it sticks so good. So just, it doesn't make it as heavy as if you're using a heavier stabilizer like Decaville Light. Um, it just gives it a little bit more of a canvas feel. Finish. Now we also will be using as a main stabilizer in this bag fleece. So these will be backed with EB Fuse Medium as well as fleece as we get into making the bag. So this is going to be my main fabric. And you know me with scrap busting. My client wanted to have a waterproof canvas on the inside. So I had this scrap. It's actually a big scrap of waterproof canvas. So this is going to be, our lining is gonna be in this black waterproof canvas, which I get from Fabricville. Um, I do not know what the denier is of this. It's at home decor uh, fabric, um, outdoor fabric. Um, 
and I, I just love it. So I'll try to remember to link it down below where you can buy this. Um, I usually wait until I see it go on sale. It's usually about $24 Canadian a meter, but every now and then it drops down to $10 and that is when I absolutely stock up. This is my ultimate favorite waterproof canvas. Okay, and for the accent colors, which is like my train case and my handles, I have all of these scraps of, um, this is the Canuck vinyl from Galaxy Customs. This is the, oh my gosh, what is this? The black one. I want to say it's Goose or something. I don't, I'm so terrible with names. Oh my gosh. And it's my best friend's business. I don't remember what this is called. But this is the black Canuck vinyl from Galaxy Customs. So I think I'm going to be able to use up these scraps of it, which is great. So that'll be my vinyl. Now, our bottoms of this, we will be putting a piece of heavy stabilizer along the bottom. I will be using a Decaville Heavy for my bottom stabilizer. Um, you could also use Peltex if you wanted. So, we talked about the stabilizers. We're also going to need some kind of mesh fabric for the pocket. So, this is uh, by Annie's um, Mesh Fabric. I got it from Emma Line Bags. And then, where did it go? I had a small piece of pre-made binding here somewhere and it has disappeared on me. So you will need a piece of bias tape. Again, it isn't for, oh, there it is. It isn't for the binding. Again, I'm using a scrap piece. This is going to be for um, binding the edges of our mesh pocket on that inside part. So it'll kind of end up going over top. Well, you'll see in the tutorial what we use that for. So you will need that as well. I probably won't be cutting this part with you in the video. You just follow the pattern in the tutorial to the lengths that you need to cut your bias tape at. And that is all we need for supplies. So um, let me clear this off and then we will get to cutting the exterior of the bag. All right, so what we're gonna be cutting, I am going to be going by the cutting chart. And as you all know, I like to use my uh, air racing sew line pen to cross things off as I go so I know I have all of my pieces. What's great about using an air racing pen is you can mark this up all you want and then when you go to use the pattern again it has air erased and the marks are all gone so you don't have to worry about um, printing off another cutting chart or erasing it or what have you. It just goes away on its own. So we're going to start with the first column which is our corker vinyl, our non-fraying fabric. So that is everything I've used on this one for my train case and for my handles. So not too much we need to cut here. We're going to start first with the train case bottom. So you're going to grab there are actually minimal pattern pieces to cut out for this, which is absolutely wonderful. So um, as you guys all know, I like to draw on the back side of my vinyl. I'm hoping I can use up some of these scraps first. Um, this dark. That one's too small. Um, that way, if I like to get as much as I can out of my vinyl, as you can see, so if I draw them out and then I find out I don't have enough or I could have situated it differently once we've drawn it out, I can redraw it before I cut it. Uh, it just it just helps uh, avoid uh, too many scraps. And the scraps you do have can be usable like this one is. Uh, it's just what works for me. So I like to share what I like to do. So we need to have one of these in your non-fraying fabric. So your corker vinyl, I'm just gonna draw it on. Oops. While I'm here, I can see that there's center marks there, so I'm just going to transfer them. So just where that little line is, I'm going to transfer that on for later on. Same with right here. And then I'm going to write train case bottom okay and we can look at our list and we can cross that off train case bottom 
I am also going to do my train case gusset out of the vinyl. So that is this part right here. That shows in the exterior fabric section, but I want my whole train case to be in vinyl. So I'm gonna hop on over to the next column where it says train case back panel and train case gusset. Here and here, and I'm gonna move them over to my cork and vinyl section. All right, so I am not going to give you, actually I need to grab my other ruler. First we will do our handles. So we're gonna jump down to our handles and we are going to do those. I'm gonna see if I can use some of my other, that actually might be good for my gusset. Not quite long enough and this is me trying to use up all of my scraps that I can. We're going to draw out two of these and these are going to be a faux rolled handle they're really cool so two inches by 12 inches or however long you want your handle to be that's up to you that's what's great about being able to make your own bags is you can make your handles to whatever length you like while i'm here i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to draw my center line at the one inch mark and that'll just help for when we go to make our handles later just to be ahead of the game. I'm not going to have quite enough there. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my other one right here. So you'll need two of these. And my center line. Does that look right? Yes, it does. Okay, so that's my handle and handle. Okay, and now we're gonna do those other pieces. I toss that off, I've got my two handles. Okay, now we're into the exterior fabric column, uh, but I, again, I'm gonna do the whole train case in the vinyls here. So you are going to cut out a train case back panel as per the measurements in the pattern. I cannot share those measurements, so go ahead and follow that. So it's the fourth line down under the exterior fabric section and go ahead and draw that out. Um, where am I going here? Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to write train case back panel. So then these, these pieces are just ruler measurements. They do not have pattern pieces. So I'm going to cross that off because it's done. And then we're going to do our train case gusset. So I'm going to go ahead, I got to grab my other ruler, but I can't show that measurement. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw that out here and then I'll come back and show you how I have it drawn. All right, so I've gone and I've used, I used my ruler to draw that out and I'm going to write train case, case, gusset. Okay, and that is all I need for my vinyls. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. You guys will be proud of me if I can find it amongst my mess over here. I changed my rotary cutter blade. I always forget. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out all of these pieces. Now these, because they are vinyl or if you've used cork, the only piece you're gonna to have to interface is you will be putting your uh, Decaville heavy piece right outside of the seam allowance around here and I believe there might be a fleece that you would add there too but well hmm, I lied there is foam interfacing on this I think yes train case bottom we will have foam interfacing on it so I will be using the pretty and pink sew foam by galaxy customs for that as well as a piece of decaval heavy outside of the seam allowances. So that is the only piece I believe. Let me double check here. Foam, foam interfacing will be in the uh, 
train case bottom, the train case back panel, and the train case gusset. So we're only using foam in as our stabilizer for these, and then for our top, it is fleece. Okay, so that is done. Now I'm going to need to cut more pieces with this pattern piece. So I'm going to set this back into my to be cut pile because I need to cut more pieces with that pattern piece and set it off to the side. Train case back panel. I believe I need more pieces with this one as well. Yeah, so I'm going to need to cut my lining fabric for this one. So I'm going to put this back into my to be cut pile. And this is great because now we can actually use these as our templates for cutting out our lining fabric. So we won't have to worry about measuring again. We've done it once, we don't have to do it again. Cut out my handles. I just love it when I can use up my scraps. That's for sure. So the handles I don't have to do anything else with so I can put them in my finished cutting pile which I will put on my table over here and then my train case gusset again we'll have to do our lining pieces with this and again in this in the cutting tutorials I do not cut interfacing in the video because we all do it different we all have different interfacings depending on where we are in the world So I just kind of talk about what interfacings I like to use. Okay, so that's my train case gusset piece, and we will be using this piece as our template for cutting our lining piece as well. All right, so that is it for our accent train case vinyl pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, and then we'll get to cutting some more of this. Okay, so now we're on to our zipper compartment. So again, uh, that is this top part of the bag. And we only need to cut two of these. So this is awesome. So these are on the fold. If it's directional, she does have an arrow for directional print. I don't know if mine is necessarily directional. Let's see, which way do I want this to go? I think that's kind of directional maybe. It is. So if I was going to fussy cut this, I'm actually going to make my center right there. So I catch these two butterflies in my center. So I'm going to fold my fabric about where I want my center to be, which is right about there. And place my pattern piece again trying to figure out where I want my dragonflies to be. I think right there looks about good for fussy cutting it. And if you aren't fussy cutting do not worry about it. Just make sure if it's directional that this arrow is pointing towards the top. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and I am going to cut that out. Once again, I'm going to be backing this. You would, if you're using cotton like me, you're going to be backing it with a woven interfacing. I'm going to be using EB Fuse Medium, just a little bit heavier than SF101, or you can use EB Fuse Light, which is an MLI product as well, that is awesome, similar to an SF101. Okay. And to make my back piece, the same as this piece, I'm going to use this piece. This is like a little trick I like to use. It's not going to be able to go there, but if I want them to be somewhat the same, I'm going to use this piece to find where it goes. See here, see when I lay it down, I'm about where it's going to be and I can match the prints up. So they almost look invisible. See, like so. 
and then I know that my two panels are going to be almost identical. It may not be perfect, but they're going to be pretty darn close. So I have it laid out where I want to go. I'm going to go ahead and use my pattern weights. And then I'm going to use that pattern piece to cut around. Sometimes it's a little hard to see because you have kind of camouflaged it laying on top, but it's worth it to have two identical panels. If you're fussy cutting it. I do a lot of fussy cutting in my bags, especially when I'm using cotton prints. I like to have everything uniform and the same on both the front and the back when I do that. So this is just a handy trick to almost get a perfect match. Almost. It'll be pretty darn close. So let's see how well I did. I think I did pretty good. I think they're pretty much identical. So that is it for that. So we will be place, putting on the back of these when you're interfacing your woven interfacing and you will also interface these with your fusible fleece as well. I will be using, I don't know what number it is. I got it from Emmeline bags. It's a fusible fleece. It's the low loft one. So those will need to be interfaced. So I am going to put these Actually, I still need to cut the lining pieces. So back into the to be cut pile. And that is all I need from this exterior fabric. So I'll clear this away and then we will get to cutting our lining fabric, which is pretty much most of our cutting for this bag. Okay, onto the lining. I certainly hope I have enough of this. We will see. So let's catch up our cutting chart, which is really just one thing. So our two zippering compartments, we are done. So we're done our cork and vinyl and our exterior fabric. Now we're on to the lining fabric. So let's see what I've got here. Oh, I have more than enough, I'm sure. So the first thing I'm gonna do, just because I need the length, I'll probably do it right here. Again, trying to use the best of my fabric that I can. So I got a big long stretch here. So that's gonna be perfect for my gusset, my train case gusset. So what I'm gonna do is just take my train case gusset piece and I'm going to lay it down on top. Make sure I'm out of my... I think I'm going to catch... No, it's not going to work. I'm going to end up catching my... Uh... Oopsies. I watch my collar. I'm dropping stuff all over the floor. Um, my salvage. So, I need a one train case gusset piece. Let me just double check. One. So I'm just gonna lay it down on top of my fabric, hold it in place, and then use this fabric as my template. So I don't have to go back in with my ruler and measure it out. I can just do it this way. Oops. All right. So that is all cut. I can put them together. Um, so if you're using cotton for your lining, make sure you're backing them with a medium woven interfacing like the SF101 or uh, EB Fuse Light. And you will also be interfacing the train case gusset exterior with foam. Again, I will be using the Pretty in Pink Sew Foam, but you can use whatever foam you, you like to use, like the Pellon Flex Foam or, or by any Soft and Stable. Any foam is fine. So uh, that is all done. That'll go into the To Be Interface tile. And the reason I chose that was because it was the longest piece and I wanted to make sure of my scrap pieces that I had enough there. So I'm going to cross off that part. So my lining fabric train gusset is done okay and now i'm going to start at the top so i'm going to do my two uh, zipper compartment pieces so once again rather than using the pattern piece i'm just going to use my already cut piece i'm going to fold this up upon itself so i can cut them both at the same time two layers again if you are using a directional fabric make sure you have it going the right way Mine is just all black, so I'm going to just lay this down on top, like so, 
and cut around and cut them both at the same time. Oopsies, don't cut your fingers. Ask me how I know, I've done it. I actually do have safety gloves that I should wear, but I don't. All right. So that is our two lining a zipper compartment pieces. So I can put these into the 2B interface pile. Again, if you're using cotton instead of waterproof canvas, make sure you are interfacing those as well. And you will also be interfacing onto this with fusible fleece. Now, depending on your machine, you may want to keep the fusible fleece outside of the seam allowance. I'm on an industrial. I'm not going to worry about that. I don't believe the pattern calls for that, but it's been a while since I've made one of these. So we will see. <laughs> Check the tutorial to see what I did. <laughs> um, where did my... There they are. Okay, so this will go into the 2B interface pile. Next, we are going to do... This is the train case back panel. Let's see if I can get it into this little section right here. Oh yeah, there we go. Is it outside? No. See what's happening here is I have my salvage right here and it falls into that, so I can't use that. So we will go down here. I might be able to get it. Again, trying to use up as much of this without wasting that I can. Doesn't quite fit there either. All right. Let's go ahead. Okay. Place this down like so. Give it a little bit of a slit there. Make sure you don't catch that. And then cut it out. This will all be scrap. I don't need this. Again, if you're using cotton, make sure you back this with the woven interfacing and your train case back panel, you will also interface with both. So that'll go into the, the, the 2B interface pile. Let's update the list. We've done our zipper compartment. I kind of got off the order of the list. Uh, train case back panel is done. Do, 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 do. Um, now the zipper tabs I will not be doing because I'm going to use metal zipper ends. So if you're going to be using zipper tabs, make sure you cut four of those out and then follow the pattern as to how to install them. And that's talking for on the ends here. Again, I just used metal zipper ends I, that I got from MLI bags and I think they're just awesome for the ends. So I'm going to cross that off. As well as it says for the pocket binding, you can definitely use this for your pocket binding. Um, but I'm going to just actually use my pre-made binding because I have some in scrap. So if you are doing your pocket binding out of your lining fabric, make sure you cut out as per the pattern piece. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just use up some of my scraps. So now all we have left there is our train case bottoms, which is this piece here. I'm going to actually use my pattern piece. And we want to cut three of these. Oh, I'm calling it close, aren't I? Okay. So I'm going to cut them one at a time just because I'm trying to use up as much as this as I can. Hmm. I'm going to have some waste, but that's okay. Okay, I'm going to cut my first one here. And because it's waterproof canvas and it gets kind of hard to cut more than one layer sometimes, two layers is good, three layers sometimes is pushing it. So we need three of these. Now, one of these bottoms, you will be, for your linings, you will be putting a piece of fleece outside of the same seam allowances into it. And that is for the bottom of the top part, just to give it a little bit more um, structure. One. Can this one fit here? Yes, it can. Two. 
remember to interface these according to um, depending on what material you're using again this is waterproof canvas so I will only be putting fusible fleece on one of them and right there looks good so I, I did, think I did pretty good I still have some scrap here but I think I left them uh, my scrap piece big enough that it's reusable for another project which I'm actually making a matching zip and grip for this so that may actually be perfect for what I need for that one two three now one thing I did you'll see this pattern piece it's got the dotted line and that is the dotted line for cutting your uh, firm interfacing and your two fusible fleece okay so we need two fusible fleeces for this I don't remember where they go in. We'll get into that as we get into the tutorial and the class. So all I did was I printed this pattern piece off twice and then I just cut it out around the dotted line. So I can just use this to cut out my, um, my bottom interfacings, which is just a lot easier than, and a lot less waste than using this piece and then cutting the seam allowance out from all of them. So that is just a trick that I like to do and it just really helps not have the waste so these will go into the to be interfaced piles so i can put the fusible fleece on two of them one of them doesn't have it and two of them does do does i speak english well not really okay so that'll go into the to be interfaced let's update our list here so i've done my three train keys bottoms and now all we have is the mesh so you're going to take your ruler and you are going to cut these out, cut two pieces of this mesh out as per your, the measurements in the pattern. I'm not going to go ahead, I'm not going to cut that with you. It's just a strict ruler measurement cutting and I cannot give you the measurements. So you need two pieces of these. There are two different sizes. So there's a zipper pocket upper and a zipper pocket lower. And that is what you want to cut out of the mesh. So go ahead and do that. And once you have that done, all you have left to do is to cut out your interfacings and fuse those interfacings. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've cut those pieces and this is what they look like. So these are the pieces that will be bound with your either your lining binding that you cut or your pre-made binding like I cut. So these are stretchy, you can see, but that's what those two pieces look like. This one will be at the top and this one will be at the bottom. All right, that's it. Super fast cutout, hey? Um, yeah, I love a bag that has minimal pieces and it's so fast to cut out and then we can just get to the fun part of the sewing. So now all you have to do is go ahead and do your interfacing and then go and look for the tutorial and start making this bag up. Anyways, if you guys did like this video at any point, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Uh, again, this is our July 2023 class, so if you wanted a slowed down uh, real-time class on how to make this bag, you can just definitely join the membership side. We are making this on Tuesdays in July 2023, so that is in the Tuesday and Thursday tier. And again, depending when you're watching this, if a year has passed, this will now be in the Beans Beats Club, which is the $4.99 tier if you wanted to see the actual class. Otherwise, you do have the tutorial on the public side, which takes you through it kind of in a more condensed, sped up version but there's options for either way that you want it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.